Jesus Christ. One. Two. Two adjustable kettlebells. Heavy, yeah. No sh Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're not familiar, the channel is Mind, Body and Whole, where we talk about mental health, fitness and food. And we're back around talking about fitness. And so today I'm gonna to share with you a video or an unboxing of my new toy, which is the adjustable competition kettlebells from Omnibell. So guys, as you can see from what's scrawled all over the boxes on the side and the top and the back, these are indeed heavy. The top end weight is 32 kilograms. The lowest weight you can have is 12 kilograms and then everything in between except 13 and 31, I believe. But yes, they are heavy and my wife will be very pleased that they're now no longer in the hallway. So let's watch me struggle opening up these things. Put the knife down before I injure myself. This one. As you can see, I bought the pair because it's worth mentioning at the moment they're on sale. It's 209, that's 209 pounds sterling for one or 399 pounds for two. So let me just move one of these. Which way up is it? Probably this way up. So let me just finish this unboxing before I get into why I bought these guys. And I think the best way is probably tip it on its head and not let it fall on my toes. Beautiful, very securely wrapped. I'm like a child on Christmas. I think there should be tools in here. Yes, there is. There's my tools, get to them later. It smells all new and unboxy. Takes me back to design and tech, that does. I bet you didn't realize I'd be smelling the kettlebells. Right, there we go. One adjustable kettlebell from Omnibell. Another one to be unboxed. Initial impressions are, it looks slick, bruv. Yeah, man. Looks good. A little bit of broken molding around the side. But you know what? It's a piece of metal at the end of the day. Oh, if it does the job, does the job. So it says here on the website, a single is £209.50 on sale from 259 and the pair is £399 on sale from £519. So I went for the pair because I fell for the market in. But basically I've hit a ceiling with my kettlebells that I have here. I've got an eight, a 12, a 16, a 20, and a 24. I don't have my 12 because my brother's borrowing it. James give it back. But if I look at my 24, I was using it for my Turkish get-ups, but now I've progressed um, past my sets of five and I've been using the 28. And so I don't have a 28, so I've been going to the gym to do my Turkish get-ups. This is made by Body Power, it cost me, even on sale, 82 pounds, and the 28 is 95 pounds. So you're up near 100 pounds for just the 28. And if you look at a 32, that's 109 pounds. So you're already paying 110 pounds plus delivery, for just one kettlebell. So I thought, let's look at the adjustables. And I've seen some by Kettlebell Kings that were out stock for literally years. And there's a few other makes over the pond in the USA and Canada. But then I saw one of the comments section on a Mark Wildman video, big up Mark Wildman, legend, who got me into this. And someone said, oh, Omnibell in the UK, so um, Omnibell in the UK. Omnibell in the UK sell them as well. So went to the website on sale. And I was umming and iron for ages because of the price, 400 pounds for two lumps of metal, still quite a lot of money. But as Mark would tell you, you're future proofed. You've got so much adjustability here. And I bought the pair because I'm now advanced from single kettlebell movement to double stuff. And so I wanted to be able to match like for like each bell because I could potentially, I could use the 24 from the adjustable and my 24 here, but I would worry that there's slight differences. So if you look, They've both, I believe, got a 35 millimeter diameter handle. If you look at the window, it does slightly differ. Therefore, if 
I mixed and matched, which would be would have been great because it could have saved a bit of money, it might feel slightly different each side, even if the weight or load was the same. So, long story short, I got the, the pair. Now, comparing this Omni Bell adjustable to another brand, the 20 kg bell I already have from Wolferson Fitness. And it does, in fact, I would say, feel nicer than my body power ones. FYI, if you're interested. Does the window look similar? Oh, it's definitely a different elevation. Now, uh, which is right per se, I'm not educated enough. But this window here on my Wolferson is definitely bigger by probably at least 20% larger window than on here. But to my point again, I'm glad that I got the pair because they're gonna feel identical in the hand, hopefully. Now, the first bell, second bell, do they look the same? Never thought I'd be saying that, but let's see. Actually, do you know what? They look different heights. Nah, just the bench. They're on the bench. The one's a bit more squished down. Yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a feel. They feel, feel nice. Not too slippy. Bit of grip on there, you know. Because I don't like using chalk with these. I know some people do, but I like them to move a bit. But that's got enough purchase to actually use them. But they do feel blind test. Yeah, they feel the same and they look pretty much the same, which is what we want. And I've just found in one of the boxes, I got a letter and I was told about this in the email. In fact, I got through to confirm my purchase. It says, can you read that? Important, read first. Oh, what's that? Spare. Bear, keep safe. Some sort of soft washer. I'm sure I'll come back to that later. What is this letter? Adjustable steel competition kettlebell from Omnibell. Steel shell and handle. Shot blasted handle for good grip and durability. Quality black powder finish coated with for ergonomics and scratch resistant. I generally doubt that, but we'll see. Handle diameter, as I said, 35 mil. Body and size and handle clearance competition standard. Well, what is that? I don't know because they're different to mine. Doesn't matter how they've got the two the same. Adjust the every weight between 12 and 32 kilograms in one kilogram increment, except for 13 and 31. So there's 19 kettlebells that you've tested in one. But later I will show you, show you a trick to get more out of these. Pro-grade body and handle shape to improve control and performance. Seven cast iron weight plates inside. Three two kilograms, two three kilograms, and two four kilograms. Each kettlebell comes with a 12 month limited manufacturer's warranty. But this is generally a rundown of how to set up and adjust the kettlebell. I'm sure I'll work this out. I don't need that. I do need that. So yeah, I better read. It's basically safety and instructions, kind of common sense stuff, but lots of caveats there, so you don't hurt or kill yourself. There's my warranty. Excellent. Put that in there, keep that safe. Well, that's a little nice to have. I didn't realize I was going to get, but it gives you some reassurances about the company, I suppose. What was I gonna say? Ah, yes, one thing to point out, it cost me 20 pound delivery. So I'm glad I didn't deliberate what I'm an art over getting one, because I thought about getting one and then seeing how it is and getting a second. But assumedly, you'd have to pay 20 pound for first delivery, 20 pound for a second. Whereas I got it all in one. Bear that in mind, I'm tallying up the costs. And on the subject of the delivery process, I found it very, very simple. The website, very good. They did Apple Pay, which I'm all about these days. Uh, and once I'd actually made my mind up, it was basically two clicks. And then they, I got immediate email about confirmation, updates from DHL, the delivery guys who were excellent, could track the package all the way, give you a time slot within two hours. And it arrived, I think, within 48 hours, which is epic for something that's you know, 64 kilograms of weight. So credit to the company for that, using a good delivery uh, service. Unlike other companies, Companies who've used delivery companies that were absolutely shoddy to the point where I nearly refunded them. But yeah, the service was excellent so far. Website streamlined and delivery amazing. So let's look at the little pieces of equipment you get. You get two, well I got four, but you got in each single bell, you get two pieces of crucial equipment you need to keep safe. That is an Allen key and then a spanner to tighten and loosen the nut 
that holds the weight plates together inside. Spanner, X key or Allen key, that's critically shaped and the right length to fit inside the belt. So you definitely don't want to lose that one. So I know I actually joked about these instructions, but it's probably a good idea to read these because it isn't you know straightforward to everyone what you need to do. But basically you use your Allen key in here. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty, and undo, separate them, and then you'll use the spanner to loosen the nut. But crucially, within the health and safety instructions, which I poo pooed, there is something quite um, crucial in there that I would mention for the review process, which is they're not designed, obviously, for kettlebell juggling, which, if you don't know, is an actual thing, as mad as it sounds, because they'll just drop and you break the internals and they'll split so don't juggle with these don't expect to buy these for juggling because they're not as uh, i suppose whole as another type of competition kettlebell which is just a lump of steel these are have internals and it's essentially a steel shell with a big thread down the middle which you have plates together in so there can be a bit of moving and clanging and it's not covered by warranty if you are going to throw these things around fyi and maybe obviously never use the kettlebells while under the influence of mind altering substances or drowsiness inducing medication. There goes my Saturday night. So let's crack one of these bad boys open. So let's get a bit more space. Turn it on its side as per the instructions. Hopefully guys, you can see that. Get your 10 mm Allen key and turn anti-clockwise, which is lefty Lucy. Big old fat bolt, keep that safe. Pull your bell apart like that. There you go. You've got your inside of the bell, which if you've seen any other videos about adjustable kettlebells, is just a, a steel cast shell with a lip around to marry it up with the top half. Nothing special about that. Cereal bowl with a hole in it. And then you're gonna take your adjustable spanner and undo whilst holding the plate your holding nut. Now, interestingly, that is considerably smaller than some of the other nuts I've seen in the Kettlebell Kings and other brands. I mean, it's still probably M20 nut of the same size, but it is a smaller nut. Whether that means there's space saving going on here or you can get more plates in is yet to be seen. Let me turn that around. So what we have inside is a 2K plate. Oh, it's got a washer on. I see, so the spare washers are here. Maybe to help with tightness, stop some loosening. So that is a 2K plate, a 3K plate, a 4K plate, a second 4K plate, a second 3K plate, a 2K plate, a number two, and then this cool looking one, 2K plate to fit into the housing at the top. And then the shell itself is, well, when the bottom half's on it, 12 kg. And that feels nice, feels nice. So I suppose you could use it like that, but it could be construed as a weapon, so don't go around playing with it like that. I suppose you could for pressing, use it like that. Um, right, so if you put this back together empty, I suppose you just put your nut anywhere in there if you've got no plates. Marry it up together. <coughs> Put your machine screw, ah, so actually before I do that, I will tell you how the system works. Can you see your thread has an internal thread? Sorry, your shaft has an internal thread. And obviously that's how your smaller bolt tightens up the whole system. It is a countersunk bolt that will grip the bottom half of the belt. Main thread with an internal thread that you bolt through. Simple, but effective. So if you want to use it has a 12 kg bell. No weights inside. <coughs> Marry the system up. Already getting a bit of crust falling around from the metal inside. Make sure it's considerably tight. There is your 12k adjustable bell. Feels good on the hand. Very similar to one of the other bells. Let me do a comparison. Okay, so yeah, there's a noticeable difference perhaps. Feels slightly smaller in diameter. Very slightly than the adjustable bell from Omnibell. But how it sits on the arm, basically the same. There's definitely more purchase on these. Though. These are a bit more shiny, and this is far grippier. Oh, I do like it. I prefer this just about because of the purchase, and it's slightly, slightly thicker. This must be the 33 mil, and this must be the 35. 
<laughs> yeah, that's nice. And so I've just checked on the website and they state that the handles are in fact a 35 millimeter diameter handle, but I can easily see just by the eye that these two differ. So one of them isn't right. Let's get the tape measure out. I mean, ideally I'd use like a caliper or something, but I don't have one. I would say actually that that comes up shy of 35 mil by about two mil. That'll make it a 33. That is bull. Sorry if I've incorrectly measured it, but I think that is a smaller handle and you can feel it. So let's just put this, oh, lighter than I remember. So the Omni Bell measures in at bang on 35. So bear that in mind, these are in fact 35 millimeter diameter handles, unlike some others. And actually not an issue really. Um, you're not gonna notice it unless you're using pairs of different diameters. And even then it's a first world problem, you know. Worth pointing out that although you can't make every weight between 12 and 32 with the standard plates that are involved, you can just use any, yeah, any one inch plate. And I've got tons kicking around, including these half kilogram plates. So if I want half kilogram increments, I can, but if I want to jump up by single kg, I just add a pair of them in, or, you know, two and a half kg. All of them will fit, I believe. What I'm gonna do is test that. So if I wanna make this a 13, I'm gonna reopen that bugger, and I'll find my Allen key, and add two half kg plates into the system, and see how it would go in. Sit them right in there, and then nut it off. nice to be noted that this isn't a fast changing system like my adjustable um, dumbbell they have but really with kettlebelling you don't need that that's another reason why i bought a pair is so for things like warm-ups i can have maybe a 16 and then my working set weight so 28 24 anything in between something like that so that seems to go in there all right i suppose i better do as instructed and tighten that up this is why this is key because when you're right in the depths of the recess it needs to be a short handle spanner and it's quite a sharp edge on the internals by the way Let's offset this spanner as well goes in there all right two half kg plates so an extra one kg in there so i've made my if i wanted it my 13 kg kettlebell you can use old weight gear that you got lying around i've even got rubber stuff did that fit in there maybe what's that that is a one and a half kg it would oh yeah just about so this is, this is great, you know, if you smash one of the plates or just want to add something else in there, you can just use any plate. More crucially, the smaller plates that aren't in here. So the smallest plate you have is obviously a two kg. So if you need a half, a one and a half, a one K jump, then use your smaller plates that you've got kicking around. Excellent stuff. So that's got my own one K plate, kg plates in there. That's fine. As I suspected, no issues with adding your own plates in. Omnibell, you should probably just provide that. People might be looking, you know, for those small increments. Just sell them as an option. Or just go car boot, you'll find some. So, as this is a review, I'm going to, just for your benefit, time how long it takes to change some weights. But before I do that, I'd just like to point out that uh, be careful and <laughs> remember to put your nut back on the thread. You can leave it lying around and then tighten up your finishing bolt without doing that and then you'll go for swing and it'll just clang around all the weights, which I just nearly did. So always do your nut up. And another thing that I considered, or hadn't considered until now is, when you've adjusted your plates and you've got what you want inside, what do you do with the other ones? You're gonna have to have somewhere to store these when not in use, obviously. And I don't know why that didn't occur to me. It's not so much of an issue, but yeah, somewhere to store the plates that aren't in use. So while I'm here, I have a stopwatch. Stopwatch? I have a stopwatch on the iPad and I'm gonna time how long it takes to get from a 12, so that is the bell empty, to a 16, which I'm going to use tomorrow for my warm up. So I'll set the other one later to a 28 to help me do my Turkish get up. So make sure your tool's down. I'm not gonna rush this, I'll just generally see how long it takes. So start that, turn it on its side. What's that? One minute 20. 
It's nothing, is it, really? You could do that in your rest, though. Easy. Oh, hang on. It's moving a little bit. Probably didn't tighten it up enough. Nah, still jingling. So that is probably what your washer is for. So if I do a swing, although I'm wearing a microphone, you might not be able to hear this. Or a clean without breaking things. Now there's a tiny bit of movement, but nothing to complain about really. Just feels slightly unnerving going from a solid bell. That sometimes, to be fair, have a little bit of gritty sand and stuff inside. You do hear it move. But yeah, just make sure everything's tight inside before you start your movements. Yes, that actually wasn't that tight. What I'd suspect is probably better get a washer in there first. Get your washer, hold your thread, nut it up again. And yeah, you can immediately tell I think that's gonna be a snugger. Snugger, that's a real word, more tight fit. Yeah, definitely lets you get a lot tighter on there. Oh, but we're putting the casing on, don't tell anyone. Yeah, definitely helps with a subtle movement that you get from the plates. So I've just tightened this back up with the washer in there with the same plates that I had. Let's see if it makes an improvement. Yeah, it's not jangling anymore. Let's do something similar. Ah, it's perfectly fine. That is much better with the washer in there. Just feels that a little bit more like a real bell. So yeah. Those washers are a good addition that I haven't seen in any other systems that I've been looking at online reviewed by others. So that's a win. I suppose the last and only other thing I would say that I would check for you guys is because I've got two, they should in theory, whoa, I forgot that one's really heavy. They should in theory be interchangeable. Let's just quickly do that by taking out the machine screw oh, and stick it in in the other one because the plates I'm almost certain will be the same in theory it should be exactly the same so let's stick this one which was from that one in this one and vice versa yeah so they're pretty much interchangeable okay guys so that is my basic review of the Omnibel adjustable kettlebells. You see me in action a little bit over there with a bit of swings and a clean press, but I hope to maybe add some B-roll to the video and put these to the test in the next few weeks. But for now, I've got no qualms of it. Fairly confident that they're gonna be a good investment, especially when I want to take a pair of these with me in the back of the car while the weather's nice. And they seem to be just what I needed. So delivering on time, adjustable, impressed with the quality little bit of you know flaking around the edges no issues there i was expecting them to both be covered in a lot of machine grease or machine dirt to be honest there's no actual difference to these how clean these are versus marble bells i receive so that's not an issue and why i bring that up is because i use them in the house on the carpet and stuff like that and i don't want to bring all that black shit through the house so i suppose the only downside to this is where do you store your plates when you're not using them. So if you are taking them around in the car, you're gonna have some loose plates potentially rolling around in your car, so just bear that in mind. Put a box or a plate holder somewhere. Obviously, they're not super quick to adjust, but that's not expected from the system. Very obviously, a pro of the system is that they're very, very space saving. I mean, I've got four kettlebells there and my collection was only gonna grow once my brother gives my 12 kg back, but now no need. So begs the question, do I sell my other bells? To that answer, I say no, because it's quite nice to have a selection immediately on the fly. So I'd set these for my main, you know, portion of the workout for my Turkish get-ups or my cleans or something like that. And I'll still use my other bells in the workouts and it's nice to jump down or up if I need be. And also I started training with a lot of friends. So it's nice to have some other bells that we can, uh, <laughs> other bells that we can pass around and train together with. But guys, that's all for now. That's all for this video. Remember, it's just advice. And if you found anything you like or you think you can relate, maybe give the video a like. But if not, come back next time and there might be something in the next video for you. That's all for now. Stay happy and healthy. Remember, take care of your bells and look after your nuts. And I'll see you in the next one.